What is poppin' YouTube? Back again with another video. I'm a little sunburnt, but we're gonna continue putting out this fantasy football content for you. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button on our way to 500 subscribers. Today, we are doing my top 20 running backs with tiers, where you should be drafting them in fantasy football. So let's go. So in the first round, I believe there's three guys that you should be targeting that are not gonna be going in the back end, that are gonna be going in the middle to early. We got Christian McCaffrey, B. John Robinson, Austin Eckler. CMC, of course, has like elite legendary upside with his pass catching abilities, where we've seen him put up elite level fantasy football fantasy points per game season with the Carolina Panthers in the past, even last year with the 49ers when he got traded. Bijan Robinson, electric level profile, playing for a team that ran the ball the second most times last season. I love Bijan Robinson when you're able to draft him at the 105, 106, 107, depending how you view these wide receivers. Love Bijan Robinson in that range. And then Austin Eckler is my RB3. After Bijan Robinson, I know Austin Eckler has put up crazy fancy football value the last few seasons. I am just not on high on the fact that I don't think he's going to be getting the same level quality of receptions that he has the last few seasons. Plus, he has been amazing in the red zone. Is that going to continue? Is Justin Herbert going to be able to throw more touchdowns this year? And that's negatively going to impact Austin Eckler in the red zone still to be determined. But there is no one else in the backfield for the Chargers that I'm worried about. I'm not worried about Joshua Kelly, even though he had a crazy run in this preseason. But that is how I view the first round. When we get to that first to second turn, of course, there's value at the wide receiver position. But if you are going to be drafting a running back, these are the three running backs that I would be targeting. We got Saquon Barkley, elite level production last season with the Giants. We saw the burst starting to come back from when he tore his previous ACL in the year before where he was just a little bit banged up. We started to see the old Saquon start to emerge. The offensive line, as bad as it was, still performed okay enough for Saquon Barkley to put up elite level fantasy points. They addressed the offensive line. Danny Dimes gets the big contract. Another year with this offense with Brian Dable. I do like Saquon Barkley at the one-two turn. We then have Tony Pollard. Now, this might be a little bit of a surprise because a lot of people have Nick Chubb ahead of Tony Pollard. And for me, the thing with Tony Pollard, like if you haven't gone and watched my most legendary running back upside where I'm targeting these guys with legendary upside. I think Tony Pollard has that in the second round. Now, do I think Saquon Barkley and Nick Chubb are both very good? Yes, but I think the upside with Tony Pollard, where we've seen even last season when he was splitting the backfield, talk about Tony Pollard as a top eight running back on a fantasy points per game basis. All of a sudden, take away Zeke Elliott and his 12 total touchdowns. I'm not saying that Tony Pollard is going to be getting 90% of the carries, but even if Tony Pollard is able to get the 75% of the touches between receptions and carries, and he's able to get a little bit more of the red zone work, we're talking about a guy that could potentially get 15, 16 total touchdowns this season. Tony Pollard, I love getting him in the early part of the second to the mid part of the second. I think that is some great value. And then, of course, my RB6 is going to be Nick Chubb, where Nick Chubb, Mr. Reliable. We've been saying for years, if Kareem Hunt is out of this offense, whoo, give Nick Chubb the receptions and watch him go to work. And we're excited to see where Nick Chubb goes. I just have him. I think the upside is a little bit less than Tony Pollard, even though, to be fair, this might be the most excited people have been about Nick Chubb over the last few seasons. With the 2-3 turn, we have Derrick Henry, Josh Jacobs, Jonathan Taylor. Now, Derrick Henry, model of consistency. If Derrick Henry was a little bit younger, we weren't so worried about a situation, everyone would be taking Derrick Henry in the first round. But with Derrick Henry's age, we've seen running backs really start to fall off a cliff once they get past the age of 28. Derrick Henry is way past the age of 28. So all of a sudden, add in the fact that now we need another year of Ryan Tannehill to get a little bit old. They had in DeAndre Hopkins, Traylon Burks. The offensive line just isn't great in the Tennessee Titans organization right now. And that is a little bit of concern with Derrick Henry. But when you have the king, when he's built different, you still got to draft him around the 2-3 turn. So I do love Derrick Henry there. And that is why I'm taking him over Josh Jacobs, who performed, like I said, RB4 on a fantasy points per game basis last season and came out of nowhere. He was the RB dead zone target that absolutely destroyed for your fantasy football teams. And you might be saying to me, Caleb, he just announced that he was coming back. They're, he's not going to be holding out. There's no worries about his current situation. Why isn't he getting boosted up your boards? And I think all those questions could be fair to say. The thing that, to me, why I can't jump on the Josh Jacobs train is we do not know how good this offense is going to be. Now, yes, playmakers like Devontae Adams, like Josh Jacobs are going to have to get their hands on the ball for it to be productive. When we have Jimmy G, Aiden McConnell as the quarterback, you get rid of Darren Waller. So right now, the only real options on this team are, of course, Josh Jacobs, Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers, Hunter Renfro. Like, I just can't see it where I'm saying that Josh Jacobs, I think he's great value right here at RB7. I just cannot be drafting him any earlier because I think last season might be the ceiling. And so the floor is probably even further down than this. So I'm pricing him pretty appropriately with the risk that I feel. So let me know what you think of Josh Jacobs, RB7. Jonathan Taylor, RB8. Same exact thing. We need to see Jonathan Taylor come off the pup list. We don't know what's happening with his trade scenario. Is he going to be playing with the Colts? Is he not going to be playing with the Colts? But like we've seen, when Jonathan Taylor is on the field, elite level fantasy football producer, it wasn't less than two seasons ago when he was the RB1 overall on a points per game basis. And now add in the fact that you had a rich who's a little bit more mobile of a quarterback who's probably going to take some of those red zone touches away. But if the offense can be better than it was last season, where you had just terrible, terrible quarterback play between Matt Ryan, can't even name all the quarterbacks. There was a bunch of terrible quarterbacks between Matt Ryan, Nick Foles, 
it just it was bad. It was bad. It, it was bad quarterback play. So Jonathan Taylor coming back into this year. You now we got a little banged up last season. Jonathan Taylor as the RB9. Super exciting for us in our fantasy football drafts. Here between the third and fourth turns, we got a few guys that I'd be targeting. We got Jameer Gibbs, Brees Hall, Travis Etienne, Ramondre Stevenson. Now, Jameer Gibbs is the earliest guy that I like to target because if I'm there on the clock and I'm on the 303, 304, 305, I absolutely love zeroing in on Jameer Gibbs because I think his upside is second to none to Bijan because of course the guy got drafted top 15. We've seen the elite level production. If you've tuned into the channel and seen any of my past videos, you know that I love Jameer Gibbs. So I'm taking him at anywhere between the 302 to the 305. And if he falls later than that, all cool. I'm taking Jameer Gibbs. Now the second running back out of that list that I am targeting is Brees Hall. And Brees Hall, honestly, like I said, he's going to the 3-4 turn. There's some drafts that I'm in where Brees Hall falls to the back end of the fourth. Now I know he's recovering off an ACL. I know his explosion isn't there, but if Brees Hall was healthy for a full season last season, we would be putting Brees Hall in the first round. No ifs and doubts about it. So we're getting a major injury discount with an offense. We just saw the highlights preseason where Aaron Rodgers is targeting Garrett Wilson. And just imagine you add in the explosive Brees Hall behind an okay offensive line, but with a quarterback that absolutely is immobile. And so he's going to be throwing the ball down the field, but he's also going to be checking the ball down. So if he's checking the ball down, all of a sudden we're looking at Brees Hall as a super viable fantasy football option. It might take him a little bit longer to get going because he's recovered from this ACL. And sometimes that does take you, you know, a full year to recover and it hasn't yet been a full year, but we are excited about Brees Hall. We're excited about that offense. So I like Brees Hall there. Even with Dalvin Cook behind him, we like the upside there with Brees Hall at the 3-4 turn. We then move on to Travis Etienne. And a lot of people are talking about Travis Etienne versus Tank Bigsby. I hear that argument. But even in this last game, Tank Bigsby couldn't get in the end zone. They put Travis Etienne and he gets in the end zone, which was a big argument against Travis Etienne last season was that he just wasn't able to get in the end zone consistently. There was like one series last season where he got stuffed three straight times at the goal line. Travis Etienne with the Jags were super excited about how easily this offense, one of the top offenses in the NFL. We had Calvin Ridley. We still have Christian Kirk. We have Evan Ingram another whole year for Trevor Lawrence in this Doug Peterson offense. And yes, it's going to be a committee, but when you're able to target these upside committees where if something were to happen to Tank Bigsby, all of a sudden Travis Etienne is back to being the focal leader. I still like Travis Etienne here at the 3-4 turn, especially if you're getting my RB2. If he's your RB1, I still feel great with about, Hopefully you got two really great wide receivers to stack alongside. Ramondre Stevenson is the last guy to be targeting at the 3-4 turn. I think Zeke Elliott actually hurt him a lot more than Dalvin Cook's going to hurt Brees Hall. Now Ramondre Stevenson, ton of upside, ton of great playing. We don't know. Bill Belichick loves to use this running by, by committee system. So what are those splits going to be like? Still to be determined, but I love getting Ramondre Stevenson at the 3-4 turn. Now let's take a look at these RB dead zone running backs. We got a few guys. We got Aaron Jones. We got Kenneth Walker. We got J.K. Dobbins. We got Najee Harris. We got Joe Mixon. We got Miles Sanders. We got Damian Pierce and DeAndre Swift. Now let's kind of walk through everyone. Aaron Jones, high upside receiving back, but with Jordan Love, we still need to see the offense. And of course, Aaron Jones has put up very solid fantasy football production. So getting him in the RB dead zone, you could say Caleb, he's been like a top 12 running back the last two seasons. I hear you on that. I just think the upside necessarily isn't there for him this year, but I do like Aaron Jones still enough. Kenneth Walker gets the backfield split between him and Zach Charbonnet. Zach Charbonnet going a lot later. I like the value on Zach Charbonnet a lot more than when you're having to draft Kenneth Walker at the back end of the fourth, early fifth. I just feel like I'd rather address the wide receiver tight end position instead of getting on to Kenneth Walker. J.K. Dobbins, while I do think there are certain circumstances where taking J.K. Dobbins would be great because we did see elite level athleticism before the pre-injury. Just last season, we just didn't see that elite level burst. There's all the reports that the Baltimore Ravens are trying to throw the ball a lot more. If they're trying to throw the ball a lot more, that means less rushing attempts for J.K. Dobbins, especially with Lamar Jackson going to be taking some of that goal line work off of J.K. Dobbins. I am not as excited about J.K. Dobbins, but if you have to get him as your RB2, I mean, I guess there's upside, but I just don't love, don't love that. And especially if he's your RB1, don't feel great about that at all. Najee Harris. Now I know I'm going to upset some of my audience because a lot of people are in on Najee Harris this year because you see Caleb, he's going to get all the volume. Well, there are even reports out of camp for the Pittsburgh Steelers that of course, Najee Harris is thunder. Jalen Warren's lightning. Now Jalen Warren looked a lot more explosive last season than Najee Harris. I know Najee Harris was dealing with an injury, but we need to be careful about just saying that Najee Harris was drafted in the first round and based on his first year of elite level fantasy football production, which was only in the top eight, he wasn't even like RB1, RB2, RB3, RB3. RB4 on a fantasy points per game basis. He got all those dump offs from Big Ben, his noodle arm. And now we're just expecting that the same thing's going to happen with Kenny Pickett, who Kenny Pickett looks a lot better than he did last season. But if he's a lot better, Kenny Pickett's a mobile quarterback. He's not checking the ball down to Najee Harris. So we got to be careful about that. Joe Mixon is next year on my list of RB dead zone guys. I think you could make the argument that since the Bengals are going to be such an efficient offense, that Joe Mixon is going to get the touchdown upside, that he's going to get the carries. But like we said, each and every season, the Bengals are trying to throw the ball more and more and more. Joe Mixon continues to get older. And there was a chance that Joe Mixon was going to get cut this offseason before he was able to renegotiate his deal, which tells you exactly how they view Joe Mixon as not just an elite level running back, just a running back. And so if they view him in that light, they're going to try to keep him healthier towards the end of the season, especially as they have their eyes set on playoff football. And so with Joe Mixon, I am just, I'm not in on him. I've been in on him on the past and I'm just not in on him.
end the season. But if you can get him at value in the RB dead zone, you can definitely see ways that Joe Mixon could provide you very solid weeks. I just put Joe Mixon in that same category that we did with Zeke last year where you're talking about touchdown or bust. Now, Miles Sanders did get the big contract here for the Carolina Panthers. With the Carolina Panthers, we know that the offense is going to be on a little bit of a learning curve with Bryce Young. Now, Bryce Young seems to be coming into his own in the preseason, but it is just preseason. We can't just base everything off of preseason. We're not seeing first team defenses being able to strategically plan for you week in and week out. And so with Miles Sanders, I'm hoping that he's able to get the three down workload because he wasn't able to get that with the Philadelphia Eagles. And you just add on the fact that last season, he had a very productive fantasy football season, but can he take that next step in the Carolina Panthers offense with a little bit worse of an offensive line, with a worse quarterback, with worse passing attempts? I I just, it's hard for me to get behind Miles Sanders, but I do like him here. Over Damian Pierce, I have slowly welcomed into Damian Pierce. I probably would not have put Damian Pierce on this list a few weeks ago, but shout out to the Fantasy Stock Exchange boys for getting me in on Damian Pierce with the fact that I think he might have a chance to be a three down bell cow running back with CJ Stroud, who, as we saw in the Georgia game, has the ability to be mobile, but doesn't like to be. So what is that going to mean? That's going to be a little bit more check downs. And if Damian Pierce can get on the field for those third down situations, I think Damian Pierce can actually increase his receptions this year, which of course is going to increase his value in PPR formats and especially for your fantasy football team. Moving on to our last and final running back here in our top 20 running back rankings, we have DeAndre Swift. Now, Rashad Penny, Kenneth Gainwell have a lot to say about DeAndre Swift, but DeAndre Swift, of course, was traded from the Lions to come into this offense, and DeAndre Swift, in my own opinion, is the most talented running back in the Eagles offense. Now, I know there was rumors that they were in on the Jonathan Taylor sweepstakes and that they've been in on these other running backs. My thing with DeAndre Swift, I know he's not going to get the receptions, but even if somehow he can get a few receptions and just be used out of the backfield better, I think a lot of when you looked at him on the Lions, you're like, man, they're just running him up the gut, or they're not even even running him at all. They're just giving him the reception. If he can get some of those carries, I think DeAndre Swift definitely has some high ups of value, especially on an offense like the Eagles. You always want a running back that's in the system. I am just worried about all the mouths to feed there with DeAndre Swift. And so that is why I have DeAndre Swift here as one of these back end top 20 running backs for me to target. So let me know down below. What do you think of these rankings? What do you think of these running backs? Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We're on our way to 500 subscribers. Going to be putting out a video each and every day. We're going to help you win your fantasy football leagues. And that all starts now. So I appreciate you guys. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.